The 690 Extreme's performance during our testing depended on the benchmark. In general, single or lightly threaded benchmarks ram well, but heavily multi threaded results tended to be below average. For example, it excelled in Prussian Office but was slower in 7-Zip and break in Cinebench. Outside of that, the results were average in other tests, including gaming and power consumption. If you want to get the most out of this board for multi-threaded tests, you'll need to make some easy tweaks in the BIOS. Otherwise, this is a performant board, with only 5 type of ports on the rear I.O., with multiple headers for front panel ports, you'll need to ensure that's enough for your needs. Design ASRock 690 Extreme Wi-Fi 6E is a good-looking board for the price. The black, six-layer PCB with two ounces of copper traces has a large notch cut out of the PCB by the SATA ports, along with flat corners on the edges that sets it apart from its competitors. All heatsinks and shrouds are black, with a brushed aluminum finish. The chips at heatsink and rear I.O. shroud have blue accent pieces to break up the monotony of black. All slots, save for the primary PCIe slot and sockets are black as well. If you're into RGB lighting, the Extreme has you covered, and then some. The chips at heatsink and rear I.O. cover have several RGB underneath, illuminating those areas. Along the right edge on the back side of the board is an additional RGB strip that shines through the translucent Extreme branding along that same edge. The integrated RGB are bright and the colors are saturated. If RGB are your thing and you're on a budget, the Extreme offers one of the more impressive light shows out of the box. Starting with the top half of the board, we get a better look at the rear I.O. shroud and heatsink below. The shroud's RGB shine through as rocks branding, as well as reflecting off the top of the left VRM heatsink. Sporting a brushed aluminum finish, the VRM heatsinks have enough mass and surface area to keep the power bits below running within spec. Just above the VRM heatsinks are two 8-pin EPS connectors to power the CPU, one required. Looking right, just past the socket and before the DRAM slots is the first 4-pin fan header, CPU Fon 9. In total, there are 6 4-pin headers scattered around the board, which all support 4-pin PWM and 3-pin DC fans with power output varying from 1-12W CPU header to 2-24W headers. CPU slash water pump and chassis slash water pump headers. CPU FA and 2 slash WP and CHA FA NUN 5 slash WP auto detect the type of fan in use. Fan control is handled through the BIOS or the Attune application. Continuing right, we run into four unreinforced DRAM slots with a single sided locking mechanism. As Rock says, the Extreme supports up to 128 GB of DDR4 5333 plus. But your mileage may vary as reaching those speeds depends on individual hardware. We didn't have any issues running our performance DDR4-4000 kit and expect there is plenty of headroom left, especially when using two sticks. We pass by two more fan headers along the right edge and run into the first of four RGB headers. In this location, there are two 3-pin ARB headers, while along the bottom edge of the board is a 4-pin RGB header and the third 3-pin ARB header. The right edge sports a unique design element with the word extreme written out in translucent PCB layer, with the bright RGB that line the entire right edge of the board lighting up the extreme branding. Of course, if you're not a fan or just want to turn it down or off, that's easy too through the Isrock Paul Chrome software. We are going to end this video right away. If you have any query or information to share, please leave a comment below. Thanks for watching.